When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who, have, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. Why would Josh Harkins and the Republican-led Mississippi legislature seek to come after Jackson's economic vitality now? Very interesting question. Uh, it has to do with power and land. And in the process of denying the self-determination rights of the citizens of Jackson, the airport sits on approximately 3,000 acres that's owned by the city of Jackson. Previously, that land was not accessible. Up until construction of a parkway that's in production as we speak, that now makes the land accessible and now all kinds of economic development opportunities are at hand. And so that's the real reason behind this proposed takeover of the Jackson Wiley Evers Municipal Airport. I think that the reason for this timing of the airport takeover has to do with absolutely power and control, but when the city of Jackson annexed the property from Rankin County and Pearl, Mississippi, 40 some odd years ago, they probably didn't predict that the population would shift the way that it has, such that Jackson is now a predominantly black city. Therefore, the black constituents can vote blacks to power. Mm -hmm. And when we, as black Jacksonians, and whites too, elected the Honorable Late Shokwe Lumumba to office in June of 2013, the white establishment got really, really nervous. They probably were a little bit nervous when um, the mayor was the city council member, um, but really got anxious when we successfully elected him. So many people, I believe, had been closet Shokwe supporters but it's easy to go into a precinct and vote anonymously for a man like Shokwe Lumumba. And I believe that the white establishment was unpleasantly surprised by the, the, the sheer number of blacks who broke their necks to go to the, the um, precincts to vote him into power. Um, once, he, once we elected him, he understood completely the types of changes that he needed to make to different boards um, that had heretofore not been true assets to the black business class. So with the airport, there were several seats for commissioners um, that some were vacant and others, the commissioners' uh, terms had ended. None of them really served the interest of Black Jackson, though. Mm -hmm. So it made sense for the late Mayor Shokwe Lumumba to appoint members who were just as visionary about black Jackson's future, Jackson's economic political future as his. 
And so he appointed this all black commission. That probably made people a little bit nervous. And then when they decided to fire certain um, agencies like, or, or firms like um, Baker Donaldson, who had uh, represented the airport for roughly 25 years, mm -hmm. billing the city millions of dollars annually. When the commission decided to replace them with Walker and Walker, then Baker Donaldson and all of their cronies were upset. They lost money, and they lost it to formerly enslaved Africans of all people on the planet. How dare they mm -hmm. make money or be on par with us economically when we should be on plantations still. Mm -hmm. um, so why now it has everything to do with shifting power. See, the white establishment, they do not seek to share power with us. They want to dominate and run Jackson strictly on their terms. And in those instances where they do us a favor, and appoint blacks that appear to be black, when on the inside they share the interests of white supremacists. Hmm. Why now? If this takeover is successful, what would the Jackson Mega Wiley Evers Airport look like? Well, first, the makeup of the commission would be altered. It would have been increased by four members from five to nine. The appointment process would originate from the governor's office. Uh, all of the current changes, contracts, um, business that has been put in place by this current commission and proposed development and economic opportunities would be gone. It would be fully controlled by the white supremacists in the Mississippi legislature and the governor's office. Jackson, as most cities in the American empire, uh, has a very serious financial crunch. It would be exacerbated tremendously by the, this proposed takeover of the economic engine of this airport. Uh, it's very interesting, as June mentioned, that why now? That airport has been underutilized for years. Um, part of the plan that was put together in electing the late Mayor Shokwe Lumumba, it was talked about avenues in which new streams of revenue could be generated for the city of Jackson. The airport was one of them. Development at the airport on the acreage that's there. Uh, the rehabilitation and development of Hawkins Field that sits within the corporate city limits of Jackson was talked about as well. So as we see, this is tied into a very sinister plan to undermine Jackson's economic viability. Because this isn't just the only action that's taking place. Um, there's the proposed building of a wastewater treatment plant in West Rankin County. Matter of fact, in excess of $125 million. Now, Jackson serves about four to 5,000 residents of West Rankin County with water treatment. And it generates anywhere between five and $6 million of Jackson's budget. The national EPA has mandated that the Pearl River is not equipped to handle two wastewater treatment facilities of that size. Jackson currently has one of that size. So it doesn't take a very long leap to see that if this proposed facility is allowed to be implemented and the, they've gotten state permission to build this facility, then what does that mean for Jackson's control of its water? And what does it mean for um, Jackson being able to, again, be a viable economic engine for its own citizens. So there is obviously a concerted plan to 
totally cripple and undermine the black majority here in Jackson, Mississippi. If the, the state is successful in taking over control, management, and operation of the airport, what that will look like is Josh Harkins and his family profiting quite a bit. Hmm. Understand that Senator Harkins um, is a lobbyist for Flowood and his family has some sort of real estate company. So he has personal interests in um, ensuring that Black Jackson no longer has control of management of the airport. The airport sits on roughly 3,000 acres. Um, the vision of the Honorable Late Shokwe Lumumba um, was to develop the property around the airport, as is the case in other metropolitan cities across the, the nation. But what makes Jackson unique is, is that it's in the south um, of all places. But it only makes sense for, for an airport to have very close by hotels and retail and, and other airport-like amenities. But with Senator Harkins and his colleagues, his friends, his business um, colleagues or what have you, they would be the greater beneficiaries of course, Black Jackson would spend money out there, but the dollars would not come back to Jackson in a way that would help to improve and keep Jackson economically afloat. Um, and that I take what, that, that I take issue with. And as um, Brother Keel has mentioned, that the airport is just one step towards taking over control of of the city of Jackson. Um, the other portion, another part of their plan, is the Capitol Complex Improvement District which um, will be managed by a commission that mirrors that of the airport authority where the, the governor will make two appointments, lieutenant governor will make two appointments. The majority of Jackson didn't even vote Phil Bryant into, into office, but he would be control of all things Jackson, it seems. Um, so the look of it would be that though blacks reside in Jackson, at the end of the day, their vote would not matter. That their mayor, be it Tony Yarbrough, or when we elect Shokwe Antar Lumumba in 2017, that the mayor's power is exponentially reduced in this so-called democracy. And to me, it, it doesn't make sense. It's interesting. What can the people of Jackson do to thwart this plan to take over Jackson economically, politically, in every aspect of life. Um, we've got to study our history as how we mounted resistance to these types of um, actions against black people in this country and around the world. You're right, they have a supermajority. They control the, both houses, they control the governor's office and probably will for the very uh, foreseeable near future. Um, so it's going to take us using every aspect of people power to resist this, as well as figuring out ways to use our economic power to divest and issue punitive economic sanctions to the bedroom communities that surround Jackson. See, it's very, very interesting how this thing works. And it's very simple as well. If you take Madison to the north of us, in the city of Madison, it's roughly 15 to 18,000 people. To the east of us, you've got Pearl and Floorwood. You combine those together, you may have 30, 32,000 folk. You put all of them together and they don't come they're not even a third of the size of Jackson. I think the census says it's about 175,000 people in Jackson. Well, we know that uh, all of our people don't participate in the census. So there's probably roughly 200,000 people within the city limits of Jackson. Those numbers and the rooftops of Jackson are used by the bedroom communities to entice economic enterprises into their areas, and they stop just short of Jackson, just short of the corporate limits of Jackson. 
Otherwise, those enterprises wouldn't come to those, those small uh, towns because they're not cities, they're towns. And they simply don't have the population base to maintain those towns, or, um, excuse me, maintain those economic enterprises. So we've got to understand that and figure out ways to use our economic leverage in um, reducing the amount of funds that are spent and dispersed in those areas. Because again, it's, it's very interesting, there was uh, an outlet mall that was just recently over the last year or so built in Pearl. And uh, one of the uh, stores that just recently closed down, which is an example of the fact that if huge numbers of Jacksonians don't spend money in those enterprises, they're not viable. So we've got to use that along with means of rallying our people and educating them around the processes that we've got power. We've just got to understand how to leverage it and implement it. So when these bills pass for the um, airport takeover and the Capital Complex Improvement District, what will be our next steps? Um, one piece is litigation. And we have enough very um, intellectual and competent, qualified attorneys who will take the lead in that litigation piece. So we'll let them work their magic. But all of Jacksonians are not attorneys. What do the lay people do mm. from the grassroots level? Well, the reality is um, Jackson is a very diverse population. There's a black upper class, middle class, and lower class. And guess what they all have in common? They spend money. Mm. Okay. Unfortunately, across those three classes, the people don't know the power of their dollar just yet, which is why the Malcolm X grassroots movement comes in handy and Cooperation Jackson is so critically important to Jackson's economic future and those of other organizations that are part of the Coalition for Economic Justice to remind the people about what our ancestors did as recent as the 50s and the 60s in terms of boycotts. While whites were disinterested in um, allowing their children to go to school with black children, they, they started to stand up and take attention when they realized that blacks weren't spending their money the way that they used to at enterprises where they would have to enter through the black back door or not be allowed to try on shoes or hats or clothes and if it didn't fit oh well but they had spent their money so when blacks even then when and with less than what we have right now mm -hmm. they understood the power of their dollar in 2016 when we own half million dollar houses Okay, and we're second and third generation college graduates. Too many of us just don't know that if we were to just stop the madness of spending our money in jurisdictions that do not care about us as humans, then maybe, just maybe, these owners of, of businesses outside of Jackson would, would take notice. But it will take those very courageous steps, collective steps, for it to work. Um, so we, we have, you know, a huge, huge amount of work, but it's not insurmountable. We have to exercise patience with, an, with one another and take advantage of the, the um, locally owned businesses. We have many awesome, great locally owned, black owned businesses, white owned businesses, all situated within Jackson. And we just need to support our own. It's, it's really that simple. So that's how Jackson will look um, and the other, the other, um, bedroom communities will, will regret that they decided to take the steps that they've taken. What can black political power translate into Jackson? And I would add only, I would interject, correct black political power. Uh, the, the inference has been made, and it's correct, that um, black people in Jackson control most every aspect of the political apparatus in Jackson. It just has not been applied properly. We attempted to rectify some of the misleadership in Jackson uh, with the um, election of the late Mayor Shokwe Lumumba, understanding that we've, 
we have the apparatus. We, we control the school system. We control the police department. We control the, the mayor's office. Um, we don't control the numbers in the legislature, but we have enough to strategic tactics could be used to bog down or, or dismantle a few things or gum up the process, so to speak. So we have, uh, we control the Hines County Board of Supervisors as far as what they look like. The issue has always been that um, a lot of our people uh, in these particular political positions adhere to the or internalize the white supremacist mindsets and undermine the um, aspirations of black people in this city. If we can galvanize the political positions in Jackson to such degree that they work solely in the interest of promoting and sustaining our political, economic, and social power within the city of Jackson, then we would re really be a force to reckon with. And uh, as June stated, it's a daunting task, but it's not insurmountable. And uh, I would dare say this is probably one of the few places in the U.S. Empire that we could get this done. So what does the transfer of black political power look like? Um, Jackson can and should be and will be the model. Jackson is situated in what we call the Cush District. Um, the highest concentration of people of African descent are located in the state of Mississippi. Um, the, the problem is that we don't know that we have the power. Hmm. And unfortunately, we have been successful in electing a countless amount of elected officials, black elected officials, since integration. We, we've, we've accomplished that. But as my brother Akil has pointed out, we have not always elected the right blacks into office, which, which means that in addition to um, better educating the people, we have to do a better job of grooming our leaders True monarchs groom their successors. We really haven't had that in the state of Mississippi. So different people, you know, will pop up, beg for people's votes. They, uh, we, the people elect them to office. The elected officials forget who elected them to office. And terms like accountability and transparency become foreign terms to them. But whose fault is that? Not the elected officials. Mm. It's their constituents who stand by and allow them to get away with bloody murder. Well, why do they stand by and allow them to get away with bloody murder? Well, we are living in a heavily oppressed society. And most of our people are, are so distracted with just surviving that they don't even have the energy and the time to micromanage their elected officials. So what does that mean? We still have to make sacrifices of time and energy and effort to ensure that our elected officials, um, that we hold them accountable and that we force them to remain transparent and force them to remain true to us. And when they don't, we simply oust them. We just don't elect them to power. So you know, once, once Jackson can pull it together, it will have a ripple effect throughout the entire state of Mississippi throughout the entire Deep South, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, throughout the entire region from Virginia all the way around and down to, to Florida and, and Texas. So it will be, we will be a force to be reckoned with. We will demand the respect that we deserve when it comes to our dollars. And our elected officials will want to represent us because we're holding them accountable. Um, they won't have fear in their hearts. They'll actually want to respect their constituents and do exactly what it is that they're supposed to do. But we're in this predicament right now um, because the same Josh Harkins and Representative Bakers and Phil Bryant's that put the current mayor, Tony Yarber, in office are still behind him today and pulling his strings and manipulating him, and we're allowing this, okay? So, you know, we, we've got to pull it together and be sure that we know just because we elect a black elected official 
um, that he may not share our, or she may not share our interests. So we, we need to be clear on who they are and, and who our enemies are and pull ourselves together. I bet you thought I was kidding. Didn't you? Picket lines, school boycotts, they try to say it's a communist plot. All I want is equality for my sister, my brother, my people, and me. Oh, but this whole country is full of lies. You all gonna die and die like flies. I don't trust you anymore. You keep on saying, go slow. You don't have to live next to me. Just give me my equality.